third, which are kind of more distant, and then I've got seconds I can ask to connect with these people. So it's, a, it's good at uncovering that web of connections. You can also do a company search. You can see where people are, if there are anyone you know that you're connected to at an organization. So has anybody got an organization you're interested in? Mercy Corps. Thanks, Rhonda. Welcome. All right, Mercy Corps. All right, so um, there are 24 alumni who are on LinkedIn who work at Mercy Corps. So you can use it that way. And again, notice it pulls up, I have only a third level connection. I don't have any seconds and I don't have any firsts which it's telling me right over here. So another nice way, again, you know, you think you're interested in an organization, is there anyone there who's, who might be a connection, even if it's a third or second level, who might be you know, willing to talk to you? Because again, if they're U of O, you have an affinity. Um, because I'm not getting clearly about the first degree connection, what is that? Is first, it just, you know each other in the same town, or? First degree, no, is that you, Someone, so I, so you're Gina, and I've, and me as June Job Seeker, I've sent you an invitation request, and you said yes, accept. Mm -hmm. That means that you and I, because I sent you that request, you and I are first level connections. Um, now, Annie, you would be then a second level connection of Annie's because Annie is a connection, a first level connection to June. Facebook doesn't go into this complexity. That's what's make it challenging. And we need to move on. Guys Just a question. question. I mean, like, what are some sure. strategies to, to, to leverage those connections? I mean, would you then be asking people for letters of rec that you know that are directly connected like that? Because, so, I mean, what are some strategies? Just, I mean, knowing is good, but what's the next step? Next step to me is doing a little bit of research of, like, it's a certain organization or not, and then doing some outreach and saying, hi, you know, I'm interested in this field. I've looked at your profile on LinkedIn. Can we connect? Can I do an informational interview with you? Can I talk to you about your organization or this, or this field or this the, the position? Um, so you probably wouldn't want to ask for letters of recommendation unless it's somebody that you are already connected with in real life mm -hmm. and you know them directly and they can speak to your work. But if you know them kind of virtually on LinkedIn, it's a chance to, to take the next step of saying, can I talk to you either face to face or on the phone or have some sort of exchange of information. Does that make sense? The, yeah, that's where you get beyond the, I have a profile and I have, I've asked people to connect with me and now what? You use it to research, you find <clears throat> where are people who are connected to you in different places, then you, then you turn around and you, you start trying to talk to those people to get more information, to build your network, to get advice, is what you want to do. So that's, to me, that's the beauty of LinkedIn, is it shows you where you have connections that you don't know that you have. So out of three connections, you know, or out of being an alum, we share 24 connections at Mercy Corps, which is not a huge group to start with, I don't think, Rhonda, is it? It's not a large organization. Oh, yeah, yeah it's a large organization. That's a nice number. It is a nice number. Oh, we're about 24 alumni. So that's, that's where I think it's a really powerful tool. But I do want to turn it over to Annie to talk about Twitter the thing that most people aren't using us on the site. How many of you guys have Twitter? Or at least have an account, maybe you don't tweet regularly. Okay, so not a whole lot of people. Daniel, I've been trying to teach Daniel for the last couple months. I'll get there. But, all right, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to the Prezi, and if you get motion sick, close your eyes. Yes. You gotta go to a little more. Yeah, and then go full screen. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead, Ooh. so. Just oh. ignore this for a second. <laughs> she, went, she went through all this stuff, so you guys aren't missing anything. Yeah. Um, do, do, do. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There you go. Come on, wait for it, wait for it. Okay, yeah, Twitter. so Twitter. Um, so on Twitter, Twitter, if you guys watch like CNN, you probably see the at sign with a little name after it. Um, I'm sure it's around all the time. If you haven't noticed it before, you will now. It's really everywhere. And the little pound sign, the little number sign, any words after that, that's a hashtag. And those are everywhere all the time, too. So after this workshop, I'm sure you guys are going to be a lot more aware of it and start seeing it in a lot of different places. Because like this says up here, there are 465 million accounts and 175 million tweets per day. 
And it's a really big news source. Um, it's really a micro blog, a micro blogging site. So people, like I was saying, they'll talk about the sandwich they just ate, or they'll talk about an article that they just read that they thought was really interesting and they want to share it with the world. Um, it's really you can share any kind of content on there. So. Um, as you move forward with that, and once you've developed your brand, you can use it to really define who you are. And this isn't really something that I would say you're going to go get a job on. It's not something you're going to go ask for an informational interview on, but it's something that contributes to who you are, and it speaks to what your interests are. Um, so if you guys took the workshop with Daniel, you kind of developed what your brand was, and you know how to get that out there, and Twitter's just another way to do that. And so starting off, I just kind of want to start with the basics, is your profile. Like Christy was saying, with LinkedIn, you're going to have a professional headshot. Twitter is a little bit more lenient. It's kind of social, fun. Um, but if it's going to be a part of your brand, it also should be semi-professional. And so you want to have a picture that's um, obviously you. And it speaks, or it, you can see it across like Facebook, and you can see it across LinkedIn that you're recognizable on all of those. And then also your handle, like Christy was saying, you can customize your URL for LinkedIn. Well, that's the same with your handle, which is the at sign with your name. And I would recommend using your full name. Mine's just, oh, mine's H-A-I-L-A-Y-N, which is part of my last name and part of my first name. So it's identifiable as me because not anybody else has A-Y-N in their name. Um, so then it's easy to find. And then also on there, let me pull it up. Um, we made one for a June Job Seeker. So here's her profile. And you can see hers is at June Job Seeker, so that's her handle. And then, similar to LinkedIn, you have your bio on there, and that should be something that's eye catching and you want people to look at your profile um, in more detail. So this says University of Oregon graduate student who's excited about nonprofit organizations, seeking a career in public planning. Go Ducks. So that's enough that you know that they're a U of O student. So if you have you meet somebody and they see that and they're also a U of O alum, like that entices them to look further. And then also on there, you can include a personal website. So I include her LinkedIn page. So people can click through that. And it's a way of connecting your different platforms so that they can see you on all these different platforms and what your brand is. And then going into like content and what you want to share on there, um, I've heard a lot of different numbers about it, but kind of like a four to one ratio of good content versus kind of buzz stuff and just noise. So if you share four articles for every one time, you say, oh, I just went on a five mile run or something like that. You guys will see a lot of different things in the feeds. People really, there's a mix of stuff on there. Some people decide every time that they buy a new pair of shoes, every time they go for a run, every time they walk out the door, they're tweeting about it. Others, it's really more professional, and if they just got done, like, whenever we were done with the meeting, we'd usually tweet about it and mention the people that we were with. And so all of that goes into your brand. Whatever people see in your feed is kind of representative of who you are and what your interests are. So if you're tweeting about, say, nonprofit organizations, that says to people who are looking at it, hey, this is what I'm interested in, this is what I'm passionate about, let me tell you more, I'm actively seeking articles. So. Another way to listen in with it is hashtags, which are the number signs or the pound signs. And so here's an article, and you guys can find June Job Seeker on Twitter to look at it more if you are interested in nonprofits, but this really goes for any kind of industry. Um, you can click on these little hashtags, so like activism and advocacy, which really are just, um, they're subjects, I guess is um, how you would define them. And so let's see, if you wanted to listen in about fundraising, they have chats, so here. You can search in this little search box, hashtag um, fundraising. It's hard, it's hard to type under pressure. Oh, it's hard for me to type anytime. <laughs> I'm a terrible typist. So now anything that has a hashtag fundraising comes up um, in the search. And so you can kind of listen to what people are saying. So here's one from MA Nonprofit Network. Um, fundraising events seen as a challenge. So this is probably an article that if that caught your attention, you could click through to read the article. Um, 
Are you finding the right funders? Probably another article that you can click through and read more. And then when you do find something that's interesting, you can share that with your audience and add that little hashtag fundraising so anybody else who's looking for the same kind of content can find it later. Um, let's see. And so is it really? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so LinkedIn and Twitter can be linked um, if they are linked to those little update areas. Are they doing the same thing? Do right. you know what I'm saying? Uh, so anytime you share something on Twitter, is it going to be shared on LinkedIn? Yeah, so you know how there was that mm -hmm. update oh, area? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to come up in that same area. Okay. Um, and so if you do connect them, I would say use your own discretion as to what you're putting on Twitter if you want to link them. Um, because sometimes if you're putting out there that, oh, I just ate a sandwich, your LinkedIn connections aren't going to care, and that kind of reflects poorly on you. So unless you're tweeting all professional content that you would want to represent you as a professional, I wouldn't link them necessarily. Um, I mean, I could go into it after. There's a way that you can tell Twitter to only put certain ones for LinkedIn by putting the hashtag LinkedIn mm -hmm. um, at the end of it, and then LinkedIn knows to only put that onto it, but um, you can talk to me after if you want to know how to do that. But really, I would say don't connect them unless you are regularly tweeting content that's going to be representative of you and your brand. Well, and isn't part of that, as you mentioned before, that they're all different platforms and they all have different purposes. Exactly. So showing that we can navigate them all in different ways isn't that part of the brand as right. well. Right, unless you want to be really lazy and connect them all from one source, like um, there's another tool, Hootsuite. Um, unless you're really lazy, um, then I wouldn't connect them all. I would do them each individually, and you're probably going to be on one more regularly than you're on the other, and um, it's just kind of hard to keep track of what you're putting across all of them if you have a link. Otherwise, you know exactly what you're putting on Facebook, exactly what's being said about you on LinkedIn, and exactly what's on Twitter if you have them separate. So that would be my recommendation. I don't know. It could be different yeah. for other people. But I think that's the safest way to do it mm -hmm. until you're really comfortable with each platform and what they're, um, what's more appropriate for each. Mm -hmm. And then also sharing your brand. So once you have your little at sign name, your handle, that's really something that's fun to share with other people, and personally, I have it on my resume, and so that shows just kind of another dimension of me on paper, so people who know Twitter know to go look up that handle, and it's just another dimension to your resume. Um, I have it, or I'm adding it to my e-signature on my email, so you know, if I'm having any kind of email communication, people can go find me on Twitter and just kind of see what I'm saying, see what excites me. Um, and just another way to get your brand across different platforms. If you're on Facebook, there's a place to have your Twitter handle on there. If you're on LinkedIn, there's a little button that you can connect to your Twitter also, just so people can see different sides of you. You know, like we were saying, each one of these is different. So if you want them to see the social side of you, you could have your Facebook on there. If you want them to see the really informative side of you, you could have your Twitter, the professional side, you would have your LinkedIn on any of those different platforms. Um, so each one of them is a different way of showing a different side of you. And I don't know if there's anything else for Twitter. Let's see. Oh, researching. Um, this is also a great way to listen to what's being said. So we go back to June real quickly. She has, tw she's following 27 different people. Some of them are us. Um, <laughs> so. You know, oh, so I went through here and I just typed in nonprofits Oregon um, into the search bar, and that's how you can find people, you can find tweets, um, you can find different groups that are going on within this little search bar. Um, so you guys can just kind of play around with the search. But I follow the see here's Green Hill Humane Society, Nonprofit Quarterly, because we we're saying she's interested in nonprofits. So then let's go to Seattle Nonprofit. And we have 714 tweets that you can look at. And so say that you wanted to apply to work for a Seattle nonprofit. I don't know this company at all, so maybe it's not even an organization. Um, it could just be a collaborative company. But um, if you were applying to work for a Seattle nonprofit, you would want to go look at their page and see what they're saying, see what they're tweeting about, um, see what's going on within the industry right now. And this goes for any industry that you're in. You'd want to go find people who are conversationalists within your industry and just kind of listen to you know what some of the buzz is, what they're talking about right now, and then that's something you can apply in an interview. Interview. <clears throat> so you would say, oh, you know, I was just on your guys' Twitter page the other day, and I saw that you tweeted this article. 
you know, I thought it was really interesting, here's my thoughts on it. And it's another way of being proactive versus reactive, showing that you're doing more research. And this is, Twitter is really just kind of a fun site for companies where they show more of their colors, their true colors, in um, a fun and engaging way versus LinkedIn that's more professional. So this is a good way for you to kind of learn the culture of different companies and organizations and listen to what's being said. And then you can apply that later on. And... And then, oh, just as for who to follow, you can really follow anybody. Like I was saying, if you want to follow celebrities on there, go ahead. I follow Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't have admitted that. But I follow Justin Bieber to see what he's saying and when his new song's coming out. So I do have Bieber fever. And, but you can also follow, like, any large company is going to have a Twitter. So if you're interested in CNN, if you're interested in OPB, interested in Walmart, um, generally any company is going to have a profile. And so the people who you follow is also representative of your brand. If you're following all stuff that's related to nonprofits, that's really cool. But you can also show how eclectic you are um, by following different professionals, different writers. If you're interested in books and literature, you can follow writers. Um, really anybody out there um, is fair game. And it shows you are, oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, I didn't need to interrupt. No, OK. So I have a question about this following and then whether or not an employer knows who you're following? This all goes back to privacy. Um, so, okay. yeah, every okay. profile, each one of the three profiles we're talking about, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you can control your privacy settings. And if you want everybody to see who you're following, then go ahead, you can have your profile totally public. If you want to control that, you can keep your tweets private. And those aren't available for anybody else to see unless they're one of your followers and you've accepted their follow request, like a friend request on Facebook. Um, so it's really up to you, and like there are different levels to it, and it's really at your discretion. Um, for the most part, I think we would recommend that you do have it public. Um, there shouldn't be much you're trying to hide as somebody who's seeking a job. Um, but of course, I don't know, I know Facebook is something that people like to keep more personal, which I think is fine. But these other two, Twitter and LinkedIn, those should be, I think, more public. The more you're trying to hide, the more people are just going to look past it and not try to dig any further. It just gives them more reason to move on. So what you can have public, I would keep out there for everybody else to see. Um, if that answers your question. <laughs> uh, well, it does because you mm -hmm. keep it private. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just I know thinking. this is a lot. <laughs> I'm just like thinking that I'm not, I'm not sure about whether or not it would be good. You just never know what an employer might. What judgment an employer mm -hmm. might make? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there yeah. was that, that, like that latest Facebook article about, I mean, just like last week or something, it came out where some professor even studied mm -hmm. Facebook pages. It was yeah. in my top five articles. I really like that feature of LinkedIn. I love yeah. it. I read it every week, and I send <laughs> one to students in my class. But that one, it really made me pause because mm -hmm. The, um, the studies showed that employers were making judgments about the kinds of things just in general they were seeing on on Facebook in particular. But then that made me think about Twitter because I don't know what would somebody think about Justin Bieber? Were you kind right. of a little frivolous? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not making no. that judgment, but I was just thinking if you're really looking for work, do right. you have everything you're following? Sure. Can I? Can I show you a little bit? Well, I want to see because. I don't know what the different industries people are in here in the room, um, but you know, Annie is. If someone in PR and media, I think that's going to have. They're going to want to see Brett. They're going to want to see you know how to use the tool. Your they want to see your interest and who you are as a person. Um, but planning and public policy, where you're the face of um, the state or you're the face of an organization, um, may not want to see that. So I think you need to, again, it's, it just comes back to being strategic and making decisions about um, what, is, what are you truly putting out there for people to take in. I mean, I follow the New Yorker online. I don't think that, you know, that, but somebody could take, like, oh, she follows the New Yorker. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah, so who knows? The whole, you, know, you, can't, you can't control how people react is the thing. So you, I think, need to be really strategic in how you, and what you put out there and, and decide who you're going to follow and, and 
what that looks like to people. So I, I do think that industry plays a role too. Francesca, do you can you speak to this from your perspective? Um, as, yeah. I as a as a um, nonprofit administrator definitely check out, see what I can find by Googling people. Um, but that's as far as I'm gonna really delve in. Um, I know that I saw another couple of articles circling around that said that employers can now get into your entire Facebook page and see everything. Um, I haven't tried, but I don't think that that's so true, um, especially in, in Eugene and in our field. We're really just trying to see if the first thing that pops up is pictures of you like, taking tequila shots, or if your first group that you love is, you know, I love beer bonging, that that's like not probably the candidate that we want for either a position as a volunteer, big brother or big sister, or um, as a staff person. But in terms of like sharing interests and cooking, and um, it really just depends on how you're using that particular tool. And I think that if you're using your Twitter professionally, then maybe keep your likes and your groups and your discussions in line with, with the profession that you are, or the field that you are looking into. Um, and I think that some of the more frivolous, fun items could be kept on your Facebook page and then keep your Facebook pri profile private. Um, and I'll talk more about um, what that looks like and how to do that. And that, um, just like Amy said, there really is a medium for everything and just knowing what you're putting out there. So, for example, I don't really tweet, but I probably wouldn't put my Twitter handle on my resume because it's not a big part of my job. But if I was in PR, I definitely would because that shows that you understand the, um, the mediums that you're going to be working with. Right. So I think a lot of it just has to do with your discretion. And um, you guys know what other people want to see, or I'd hope um, that you're pretty aware of what people like to see, what you want to share. You know, if your Twitter isn't populated and it's not anything that really speaks to who you are, um, that's not something you'd want to share, like you're saying. Um, this, so each one of these is very different, and it's up to you guys to use your own discretion. If you do have questions about it, we're more than welcome to answer those. I know there's kind of like a gray area between these that it's hard to understand what's that what's more applicable for each, and I'd be happy to answer those questions. Um, we talked about the the chats that you can listen in on. Um, oh, actually, you know, I didn't explain that too well. Is that with these chats? Sometimes there are actual scheduled chats, and you can look these up. Um, they'll say at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, we're going to be tweeting about this hashtag fundraising. And so then you can listen in and follow the feed of what everybody's saying. There will be usually a moderator who's posing questions that other people can respond to, and you can be a part of the conversation. It's a good way to connect and start talking with other individuals um, who are outside of your network. Um, but it's also a way to just listen and see what's going on in your industry and kind of hear from other professionals who are doing the same kind of work. And if they're sharing articles that you think are interesting that you want to then share in turn with your network, um, it's really a good way to listen in. And you can find these by Googling them if you guys are interested. I haven't done the chats too much. I've listened in on one. Uh, I say listen, you're really just watching. Um, but I've only done one, so I'm not an expert on the chats, but I know that they are a pretty good tool if you're interested in learning more about an industry or engaging in conversation. And then, like I said, you can listen and then apply whatever you learn in an interview. And I already kind of went over this, so I won't spend too much time on it, but it's just a way to show that you've done your research and that you're active on whatever platform. This really goes for any of them, um, that you're listening and then applying what you learn. And then, so you could follow, I don't know how many people I follow. I think I follow like 500 people maybe. Um, and that can really clog my feed up that I have a lot of stuff going on all the time. It's just like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to filter through it. Well, there's a list tool on Twitter that as soon as you add somebody, there's a little box you can click and you can add them to a specific list. So you can have nonprofit lists, you can have a friends list, you can have a professionals list. And then that way, when you click on that list, it's only those people and their status updates that you read. So that's a good way to kind of filter through. And if you don't have a lot of time during the day, all this can be really time consuming. And that's a good way to just say, oh, I'm only interested in what the professionals are saying right now. So you can click on your list and just read what's in there and go back a little ways. Because by no means should you be having to read every single tweet that's on your feed. Same with Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, 
there's just ways that you can organize this so that it's um, time saving. And the list tool is one way to do that. And then I was talking about the content ratio of having, you know, for every four posts that you're sharing an article, it's not bad to say that you just went on a five mile run. Maybe um, whoever is looking at your profile is also a runner, and then that's common ground that you guys have to start a conversation. Um, or you're doing it for a charity and then you yeah. can for sure. tag that charity, for example. Yeah. Big Brothers and Sisters, Truffle Shuffle, you could say training for the Truffle Shuffle just ran three miles, um, you know, at Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and hashtag with one of our um, themes that's going on. With, with that page. Right. When I was yeah. down in California over a break, I was actually driving through Jack in the Box because we were in a hurry, and there was a sign on there that said Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, you know, it's a little donation box, I think, and I just like snapped a picture of it. Well, you can share pictures on Twitter also, so I snapped a picture of it and then mentioned Big Brothers Big Sisters Lane County with their handle, and then, oh, I don't remember what I put, something about, oh, it's glad to see, or I'm glad to see Big Brothers Big Sisters across the nation, and then hashtag donate, or volunteer, something like that. So it's just kind of a way that you can really get other people out there. You're helping other organizations by putting their name out there and mentioning them. Um, so whatever content you do put, it's always nice if you do include a handle, like if you have a way to relate whatever you just did to an organization or a person, um, or include a URL um, or any kind of hashtag, but you don't want to go like hashtag crazy. Sometimes, I don't know, for anybody who has been on Twitter, um, you'll see sometimes people put you know, hashtag hilarious, hashtag oh my gosh, hashtag this was the best day of my life, and people can just go crazy with it. You really just want to keep it like to the point, very concise. Um, but that's just more like etiquette that if you guys have questions, like we can always help you out with that. And then being proactive versus reactive, it's really easy to sit there and listen, but whenever you do go out there and you do find an article and you share it, that just shows that you're more proactive than reactive, which is always good, I think, no matter what field you're in. Um, so if you're you know, on CNN and you do read an article, then instead of just skimming past it, take the 10 seconds to put the URL up on Twitter and share it. Um, and I don't know, I think it just kind of speaks to who you are, that you're a proactive person and reflects well on you and your brand. That's all I have to say. Okay, so Facebook. Fun! Um, I'm really excited to share with you guys a little bit about Facebook and how you might be able to shift gears a little bit and actually use Facebook as a tool um, in your job search and in your um, connectivity to professionals in your field. So um, it definitely has a huge um, fan base. Um, I, I saw on the statistics when we did the poll that most people are using Facebook or is familiar with it. And I think the um, importance of Facebook shouldn't be underestimated in that it can provide for the spark to kind of launch an opportunity or a connection, even if Facebook isn't the medium that you use to pursue that connection. Um, so it is more of a social networking, content sharing. Um, you can definitely like the organizations that you're interested in or maybe pursuing jobs at. A lot of organizations will actually post that they have a job opening on their Facebook page, even if they ask you to um, submit a resume by emailing somebody as opposed to like, commenting on that you're going to apply for that job, for example. Um, so using it as your brand, um, definitely think about the content that you are posting individually um, and how it might reflect positively or negatively, <clears throat> depending on who you are friends with on your Facebook page. So a lot of folks I know kind of keep their Facebook very private and my only friend people that they actually are friends or acquaintances with. There are other folks that might be friending um, colleagues or people that they've met in other arenas of their lives that may be paying attention to the kinds of things that you're posting. Um, so keeping the content that you're sharing out there, um, if you are using it more professionally relative to the field that you are interested in, so June Job Seeker, for example, um, is interested in sustainability and nonprofits. So she might share an article um, from, you know, a blog about a sustainable bamboo iPhone case, um, as opposed to pictures of her partying last weekend. But that doesn't mean that um, 
you can't also have that personal kind of piece with your Facebook page. There are ways you can share only content. You can share content only with a certain amount of people, like your close friends or just your family. So I know a lot of folks use Facebook as a way to keep track of photos, family photos, memories, things like that, as opposed to having um, their photo albums on you know, another hosting website or um, on a hard drive that could at any point crash. Um, and so you could select to only share those family photos with your actual family. Um, and you could share the articles that you're posting with your larger network of, of friends. Um, so think about, you know, is it appropriate? Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, I'm sure many of you that have Facebook have, have that Facebook friend that posts pretty negative things out there like the rain, my car got broken into, you know, and those are all sometimes necessary to kind of get that outlet of venting. But at the same time, as a potential employer, if I were to be, you know, viewing that every comment from this person is really negative or they're talking badly about their current position and they're looking for other jobs um, or about their colleagues um, in like a gossipy negative way, then that's not somebody that I want to bring on to my team. So when you're thinking about your professional brand, it does have a place within Facebook, but again, the discretion is really important. Um, so setting your privacy settings to be reflective of how you'd like to share what you are putting out there. Um, you can also connect with causes and businesses that you're interested in um, that potentially could lead to a, a, a position. This is fun, but it's a little <laughs> jazzy. So brand yourself with pages, um, just like uh, Rhonda mentioned, um, the likes of the pages that you might be interested in will reflect one way or another, um, depending on how you're using the tool. So researching, you can definitely find out a lot about an organization with their Facebook page, um, history, um, who are the kind of key players that are involved, looking up photos, Big Brothers Big Sisters, I know I keep using that example because that's where I work, um, and this is not a PSA for the organization, but it is kind of cool to see that we've had um, photos of the youth and the mentors in our program at different activities to be able to celebrate some of the things that we do um, out in the community. Um, and that definitely, if somebody was interested in a job with us, um, we had our most recent hiring actually, um, the professional mentioned, oh, I saw that on your Facebook page. And it was about an activity that had happened a couple months prior. We were using it as an example um, as part of her interview questions, and she actually brought that up. And we were all quite impressed with that fact. But it showed that she had been following us or had been a fan of us or had liked us um, for a long amount of time as well, so that she knew that there was an impact in the community. I think you can also share articles um, that are relevant to your interests. And again, just keep it relative to what you're using this tool for. And then if you see um, comp, uh, posts on pages of interested fields, then you can comment on there and kind of start a conversation as well. Um, I know that there are lots of other platforms you can link to, but again, if you really are interested in more of a professional connection, um, and you found it via Facebook, I would go to that organization's page and see if they've got like an e informational email address and send an email instead, or find that organization on LinkedIn, or find them on Twitter and be able to kind of connect on a different level, so that in order for that person to get to know you, they don't have to become your friend and see the pictures of your new puppy, although they're probably cute, might not be the most uh, professional. And connecting, finding events, um, networking type events that are going on. I know that there's a lot of groups on Facebook like Women's Business Network of Eugene that has um, you know, quarterly or monthly events that you could go to and actually meet some of the people that you are seeing on those particular pages. You don't have to be friends with people um, to be able to see comments that they've made on a post. Um, so that's another way that you can kind of keep that level of boundary there um, with your own personal um, connections and, and information. So networking opportunities, to friend or not to friend. So if you meet a business contact um, at an event, maybe connecting with them on LinkedIn or um, 
I've seen a lot of folks that have like a kind of a generic business card that might have LinkedIn profile, your Twitter handle, um, one of the other uh, virtual kind of website, virtual resume viewing capabilities, um, but doesn't necessarily have linked with whatever your current position is, if you're really out there looking for jobs, or if you're still a student, um, rather than having a business card that says, I'm a student, you could just have something that says, um, like we talked about taglines a minute ago, something like um, community and youth advocate. And that way it says a little bit about you, and then if someone's really interested, they can find you on those other platforms. But that friending somebody on Facebook might not be the easiest or the most effective way to, to make that professional connection. And if you are looking for opportunities, um, definitely share with your network. Um, even if, again, you're going to con contact that opportunity outside of Facebook. I know that I personally have a lot more Facebook friends than I do connections on LinkedIn or on Twitter. And so you never know what's saying, hey, I'm looking for jobs in the nonprofit sector. I'm interested in you know, community <coughs> development, sustainability, and working with youth who might be able to see that or who would share that and be able to um, get back to you with some ideas or some websites um, to be able to find some opportunities to get involved. So June Job Seekers, how do I get out of this? Escape. Escape. Thank you. Facebook, so she's also, she's on Natural Blonde, um, <laughs> which is okay because this is her Facebook page. So maybe she's got more friends from <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts, where she grew up, that recognized her um, with glasses and with dark hair than on her LinkedIn and, and her Twitter. Um, so she's a volunteer at Food for Lane County, so she might be connected to a lot of folks there. Um, definitely a list of the University of Oregon, and it shows up that there are other people that she is friends with that are also listed at University of Oregon, so that there may be some community and some connection there. Um, we didn't actually add in any uh, job opportunities aside from being a volunteer because June may be working somewhere and, and um, isn't sure if she's going to stay or um, doesn't really feel like having that professional connection on her Facebook. So she's using it a little bit more of us on a social level, but also wanted to add that she knows Spanish, English, and sign language as a, as a skill that maybe she can connect with people around as well. So any questions about Facebook or use um, within the context? If, yeah. Yeah, if you like a page, are they then able to, from that page, you can see your content? When you like a page, the page administrator will get an announcement that says, June Job Seeker has liked mm -hmm. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lane County. Um, but as an admin of that page, I can't then go and see June's page unless um, as a personal person.